Welcome to the channel everyone. This video I'm going to show you some old school welding. Now years ago before we had MIG welders in the shops we did everything with oxygen and acetylene torch and everything was either brazed together using a brass rod or steel rod. And the difference between the two, brazing is like soldering. You're heating up the metal, you're going to melt some solder in there and flow it in, but it doesn't fuse to the metal, it doesn't fuse two pieces together. It more or less glues them like a solder does. Where metal, you'll actually heat them all up, heat the two layers or two panels you're welding together and the rod all the same temperature, and you can puddle this in here. And you'll see it'll spark just like a a MIG welder or an arc welder would, but that fuses the two panels together. So these were, this was pretty much standard for years. I went to trade school back in the middle 70s and we never seen a MIG welder in a shop. Everything was done with a torch. So I'm not sure when MIG welders, they had been in some shops about that time. The first one I used was in 1982, a shop I started at and they had a MIG welder, been, they had it for several years, but uh, so switched, to, everything was done, you know, MIG welding by then, but I still like using the torch and brass. Years ago, we used to do a lot of patch panels. Trucks would rot out, and you're always putting cab panels in and rocker panels, and brass was just an easy way to do it. You could get in there, flow that brass in. It was easier to clean up than it was a hard metal weld. So, you know, it's still, it had its purposes, and I don't know if still guys, if they still use this, doing some old school restoration, but it, uh, it was fairly strong for what we worked on in a day. You know, that's all we had. Uh, it's not recommended anymore with the uh, high strength steel and all the coatings they put on the metal. You do, you do have a big heat effect zone. These are just some scrap pieces here. I'm going to start off with running a bead of brass across here. And we used to also plug weld with the brass. And if you got lazy and you didn't want to sit there and punch your holes or drill them pre, you know, ahead of time, you take the torch and you could heat a spot up and it would get it pretty hot. It'd blow a hole in the top panel and then you'd heat up the bottom panel, melt the brass in there and it would fill it in. So it was just kind of a uh, uh, lazy man's way of doing plug well. So I'm going to get the torch set up here and I'll show you how we used to do this. Now when you're using your torch, this is a, I think it's a number of zero tip on there. Usually a zero or a number two. It's fairly small. And we'll turn on our acetylene. And you can see that's a lot of carbon. The black soot coming off of there, that's carbon. We eliminate it here, but it's just a little bit too hot for the brass. So we want a little bit of carbon coming off. And then we're going to open up our oxygen. And you can see there's actually two tips there. There's a real close one to the tip, a bright blue tip there and then the one that's farther out here and we're going to pull those back together. If you go too much, you can hear that, way too much oxygen. We just want to kind of get those tips to be in the same place right there. That might even be a little warm for brazing. I'm going to dial it back just a little bit. As you can see that just puddles in there, it flows in, and it's kind of like a solder. Now one thing, Bondo doesn't stick real good on this brass, so it always has to be ground down as much as you can. This top here would all be ground off, you'd even grind a little bit back in here. Minimal brass is, once you, is what you want exposed. And 
sometimes you take a, a sandblaster and go over that, rough up the brass some, it would help the Bondo to stick, but you don't want a whole lot of brass exposed. So I'm gonna show you how we did a couple of, or how we used to do our plug welds. See if I can put a couple of those in there. Want a little more heat for that. And that's how we used to do plug welds if we we're too lazy to punch our holes ahead of time. It does take quite a bit of heat. Usually you only did that if you were in a spot you forgot to punch a hole and you had it clamped and had some brass weld or some brass in there already and you didn't want to you couldn't take it apart. So it does heat up quite a bit of an area. It's still got a little bit to fill in, but you get the idea there. And it does heat up the back quite a bit. You can see the heat effect zone there. It's, it's way out to here. But that's how we used to do it back in the old days. So I'm going to put a couple scrap pieces of metal here and I'll show you how we did the steel rod. Get rid of this. Okay, here's a, it's got some brass in there, but I'm gonna run that steel right across here and show you how that works. I need some bifocals on my welding helmet. I'm off of my seam right there. Let me hit that again. Okay, it's not the prettiest job there, but you get the idea. And you can see that puts a lot of heat into these panels. Now I haven't done this in probably close to 40 years, so it's not the prettiest looking well, but you can see how it would spark and fuse that together. Now years ago, if you took, took your car to a muffler shop, that's how they would weld your exhaust together with the torch and the steel rod. And those guys would get pretty good because they'd bend that rod up 
overhead so they could wrap around the tailpipe or exhaust pipe and get the torch in there. They could weld and they did a nice job. They did it all the time. The body shops, we did quite a bit of it, but we did, I bet you 80% was all brass. So like I said, these are just a couple of old school techniques and this is just what we used to use years ago. Uh, shouldn't be used anymore on today's cars, but for old restoration and if it's something you want to practice with just to learn how to do and uh, it's kind of fun. I always like brazing. It was always kind of, I don't know, it was always kind of nice just to flow the brass rod in there and see how, how far you could stretch it. And the, the brass will creep in between those two panels. It'll creep down into there and if you get real good you'll have very little brass you actually have to clean up. So it's like anything, it takes practice and it's kind of one of those things that's turning into a lost art. But uh, anyway, I hope you liked this video. It wasn't uh, something you're gonna use every day, but just something to uh, see how we used to do stuff in the old days. So anyway, thanks for watching.